YouTube, we are in the top 16 every single week, bro. This is gonna be the full top 16 with the grand finale top eight and the deck list being in a separate video by watching as long as you can. Even if you have me on in the background, YouTube tells me about it and they like it. That greatly supports me. Liking, commenting, subscribing also helps. With that said, Hajime. There can only be one winner and you're looking at it. Let's go. We got triple back row set, two imperms plus the called by. Now you would think maybe you wanna just keep everything in your hand, but then you can't use the call by the grave, which is gonna be very good when used against Super Heavy Samurai on their Soul Piercer as they attempt to reborn it from the grave and also negating its effect of when sent to the grave to search from the deck and continually using it. So called by is huge. We got the wagon on someone putting itself in the defense to then go into attack to search our deck for the Peacemaker. As we then link this up into our Scarecrow. Scarecrow, discard a card to Reborn from the Grave. This is where we could call by or instead use Max C. We're on summon number two for the Nibiru on five summons. We'll be tributing the entire field here. Come forth wagon, Peacemaker equipping. As we then send to the Grave at a special summon from the deck, our Wakashi. We're on summon three, four, summon number four. Summon number five. Summon number six as we're locked into Super Heavy Samurai only. 4,000 attack as the Piercer is gonna be activating a search for, I would say, Soul Horns for double attack lethal. But we are not, because we already have it. Stealthy, we don't want to further special summon under Maxi, but we're doing so anyway. We think we have game, but we definitely do not. We have Effect Veiler being used onto the Masuwaru, which can no longer attack while in defense thus stopping the entire turn, and we're not even tossing a Nibiru on top of it because what does the Masuwaru even do? Its effect is, if your opponent activates the spell or trap, we could then draw until we have three cards. So we could, while triggering this, we could then chain Maxi to draw two. We have Cynet Mining, chaining the Maxi to the Cynet Mining, but the called by finger was there and waiting. Negate and banish the Cockroach for two turns. So even for Lauren Dick, their own Maxi is not gonna be good but I do think Lauren Dick's actually gonna be winning this turn. They should be. Come to us circular, trigger the Masubaru to draw two, which I think would be a good opportunity to imperm it. Imperm negate, yes. No, thank you. It's also worth noting that called by versus Peacemaker does not actually stop it. So uh, maybe someone was thinking, why not called by the Peacemaker? It, it, the called by only stops monster effects and the effect of sending itself to the graveyard to summon from the deck is a spell effect, which just believe me, it doesn't work. Imperm negates. No draw for you, draw two negated. But how much are we willing to do under max C? Well, I never mind, I actually got fingered. So uh, how much are we willing to just win the game right here, right now? We will do it. We don't mess it up. We should not be messing it up. We're gonna grab a super factorial instead of the equation, which reborns in the grave. We can make an Allen Burt to uh, search our deck for a monster. The circular, oh, we, you know, we can search for anything. Any Mathematic card, we're not grabbing another equation here. We don't need the equation, it looks like. We could just lethal without it. Reborning from the graveyard, the Allen Burt to summon the from graveyard Sigma. As we now make our update jammer with the transcode talker to reborn the update jammer, which will then give our access code talker the ability to double attack for 8,000 damage. This is the access code talk about. You gotta make sure with this card is that you have enough different attributes in the grave. We have wind, we have earth, we have two monsters in the field who can wipe it up and attack, attack for game, double game. All right, we want to protect, put the access code talker on the higher chain link so that they cannot respond to the update jammer. That's actually gonna be 10,000 damage for game. We're gonna be banishing from the grave both of our link monsters opening up the field for a direct attack, 10,000. Now the circular locks you into one monster attack only. So we did need access code talker plus the update for game. Very well done. Maxi winning the duel, I'd say, Maxi. Setting up the Wakashi here. We do have imperm. When do we want to be imperming? As the Benki searches for the soul piercer, normal summons, then link it off into the scarecrow, triggering the piercer to then search our deck for our motorbike. Motorbike, discard, search our deck for a Peacemaker. Scarecrow discarding to reborn the Piercer. Now we're going to use our Imperm Negate. So disabling the use of recycling the Soul Piercer, which we're gonna do anyway by using Peacemaker to summon a scale, so then reborn the Piercer anyway. This is the problem when playing against Super Heavy Samurai. 
it's if you don't have Droll or Max C, you can't really stop them with the single hand trap. Maybe even multiple hand traps, you can't really stop them because they'll have enough extenders to play through it. But Kashi equipping itself into the back row as a pendulum scale. Piercer searching again. I believe this is uh, our second time searching as the Excel Synchro reborns the motorbike going into our Baron to floor. We have not pendulum summoned yet. We're going to special summon. Pendulum summon also going right into our Borload Savage Dragon. I thought we would have uh, been making more plays beyond that one, but that's okay. Borload plus Baron to floor is pretty good here. And we just stole Imperm and passed. <laughs> Can't believe this. Stealthy steals the opponent's spell or trap from the grave. That is wild. So now we have Imperm negate, Borload negate, Baron to floor negate, Maxi and Nibiru begin. Maxi in the standby phase, Ash to negate. And because we're, we are within the standby phase, we could Baron to floor negate the Ash and then reborn a monster from the grave if we want to. But we're not going to. Sure, you don't want Maxi to go through, that's fine. I have enough negates for your four card hand. Three negates, four cards on the hand. We should come out on top, not even bothering to negate the Cynet Mining. We now have the Dot Scape, negating Dot Scaper over the Cynet Mining. That's interesting. Dot Scaper simply just summoning itself onto the field just to be a body. All right. We have now have Circular sending from the deck a Sigma. We're not negating the Circular. We're not negating the Sigma. We're still not negating the Circular. Searching the deck for an equation. Akitama searching for the Sakitama. Sakitama additionally summoning. We're just not using our negates, but I guess we're waiting for them to play into Nibiru. Is that the situation here? Alan Burt is now here. We have used up our normal summon, so searching for a diameter is not going to be that big of a deal. Also not having diameter under it, meaning it does not have a negate for this imperm. Negate. We do have the equation for follow-up play still. Come forth, update jammer. We just have Baron to floor negate, and when do we negate? Negating the transcode talker could be quite effective here. Update jammer, going to give it the ability to double attack, reborning the Alan Burt. Alan Burt tributing it. We're just trying to trick the Baron into activating. I don't think it's gonna work though. Reborning, it didn't work. Going right into the access code talker. So we passed on our transcode as it would have been negated. Now the access code talker cannot be negated. And now we're pretty much forced to activate Nibiru. This is interesting. Baron to floor got played through effectively. In order to Nibiru, you must have your toggle on. Toggle on, then tribute the field. Now the Wakashi cannot summon itself onto the field if there's a Benki. If we have a way to get rid of the Benki, then we could use the Wakashi. But Benki is actually going to benefit us here as because we have a Super Heavy Samurai in the field, it can now search for a Super Heavy Samurai. Come to us, Piercer. A good way to get rid of the Benki could be your Ballista. So Ballista pop the Benki after using the Benki, then Wakashi Special Summon could be our play. We are going to want to combo up the Peacemaker with the Scarecrow since we can't use it for linking. Combo the Grave is going to be banishing the Piercer, which is a big disruptive play. The Peacemaker could summon a Scales from the deck if we still have one, don't we? But Scales is in the Grave. So what do we summon instead? Scales is supposed to be that plus one combo. Instead, we're just summoning a negated Piercer. This Piercer could not activate when sent to the Grave. Special summoning Wakashi to then make a Baguska. <laughs> we have... We are getting desperate. What is going on with Super Heavy Samurai? These, these are not good. We only have nine cards left in the extra deck. What are we not summoning here? The Guska forcing that token into defense so it cannot attack. Every turn we're detaching material. We could Baguska for two more turns. That's it. We got Ghost Bell. We got Ash. Come to me off the top of our deck. Another maxi. The Benki is begging for a super heavy samurai. We cannot use Benki. We cannot use Wakashi. Wakashi needs the Benki to be off the field. Okay, uh, it looks like we're going to link off the Baguska, maybe. No. <laughs> we're normal summoning maxi and ending? Not even holding on to it? What is going on? Okay, that's it. The Baguska dies. Next turn. It's over. And Baguska only stops non-Link monsters. So if we have Link plays, we don't care about Baguska. But what Link plays do we have? We got plenty. We got plays. The Crystal Heart could reborn the Transcode Talker from the grave, which I'm thinking Maxi would have been pretty good against all this, but they did have Ash to stop it. Transcode Talker has piercing battle damage. 3,200 double piercing battle damage with the Transcode Talker. Not enough for game, unfortunately. 
Main phase two, splash mage, reborning the circular from the grave. Are we going to heat soul? Yeah, we heat soul and heat soul with different attributes. Cyber monsters draw a card every turn. Oh my gosh. Drawing into a super factorial that's huge. Baguska is now gone. I don't think we have diameter in the grave. Do we even have, we don't even have three. We don't have three math max that we could summon with the super factorial for the Laplacian to then send the Regulus. We now have an Omni Negate with the Regulus. Equipping the Piercer, going in for a suicide, which would trigger the Piercer to search our deck. Regulus sending itself to the graveyard to negate that super factorial. And let's see what we could do main phase two with the Piercer search. We are going to be grabbing something that we could normal summon. Nothing, because, so what's interesting here is had we not negated Super Factorial, had we gone to the damage step and killed ourselves through the Heat Soul, the Piercer would have activated in the damage step. Now, can Ash negate in the damage step? Let's read the Ghost Spell first. Ghost Spell says, discard this card to negate the activation of something that interacts with the graveyard. This is activatable in the damage step because it negates the activation. If we read Ash, Ash says negate that effect, thus it cannot be used in the damage step. And because the Regulus negated outside of the damage step, we can now negate. So if the Piercer actually damage step searched, would we have really been able to do anything anyway? You'd summon, Benki would then be negated. I guess you would have Wagon. Wagon and Benki would both be Ashable afterward. Very well done from both players. Thank you. Let's hop into another. Let's fix up the scores. We were talking about how Cash Tira could hard counter Snake Eyes, forcing any card sent to the graveyard being banished instead. We have Ash Blossom negating the Cash Tira Theosis, which would be summoning from the deck a Fenrir. That is a very good negate. You definitely do want to save your Ash for the Theosis if possible. Now that unfortunately triggers the Unicorn to look at the extra deck and banish our one of Promethean Princess. If Cash Tira were more relevant, you'd want to double up on cards like the Promethean Princess, which is a core card to your Snake Eye deck. So not only are your cards going to be banished, you just lost a key card from your extra deck. And we also are getting random cards banished off the top of our deck. Now, what's good about our Max C is it stopped them from summoning the Unstoppable Rise Heart, which would be forcing all our cards to be banished. Now, what kind of great plays can we make without the Promethean Princess? as we definitely are not playing a second copy. Let's go. Ash on summon, grabbing the Poplar. Poplar activating on add. Also triggering the Unicorn to banish another card from the extra deck here. And we're also going to have to be playing under max C. So what happens here is Poplar would activate chain link one. We could then chain link two, draw and Lockbird in response to them adding a max C, which then negates our Poplar. Uh, you know, that not the greatest thing to do, but if we draw on Lockbird, the Max C, we could still make some good plays even without the Poplar search, or maybe we want to search and then draw ourselves afterward. So let's see what we do. Are we drawing on this summon? No, we're going with the Poplar search. Okay. On the resolution of the original Sinful Spoil, summoning from the deck, we could draw that. Taking control of the Unicorn on this Link Karibo, now we draw. This is it. Draw. Yes, drolling yourself and your opponent to stop Max C. That is a huge benefit of Snake Eyes, being able to effectively droll themselves and still make big plays. We're summoning Oak from the deck with the original Sinful. Oak will reborn from the Banished or from the uh, Grave, which the Ghost Bell will be negating. Unfortunately, we we're not able to chain link block the Oak with something like the Poplar also being sent to the Grave at the same time of its summon. We have the Unicorn looking at the extra deck banishing the Zeus. And this is an instance where making the Link Rebo early could be a bad idea if you want to protect your Oak from being not negated by something like Bell. So you looked at their hand, you see that they have a Ghost Bell. Not that we did, we took control of the Unicorn, but if we did, we would then go, okay, instead of making the Link Rebo, let me send the Poplar at the same time of the Summon of the Oak, put Oak on Chain Link 1, put Poplar on Chain Link 2, then they're not gonna be able to negate the Oak. We now have Flame Burge Dragon also being summoned from the deck here. To battle we go. Not quite lethal. We also don't have the field spell bo boosting up our little snake eyes. Now we have Hita, which could summon a fire monster from the grave. That fire monster is going to be nothing because we're going to use Scareclaw Cash Tira to banish that fire monster instead. 
We want to make sure that if there was an Ash in the grave that we would have taken control of that instead. The Flame Burge is equipping into the opponent's back row from the graveyard. What we have to understand with the Flame Burge is it's either field, either grave. And if you're going to be able to end the field with the Flame Burge, you may as well look at the graveyard like a buffet and choose whatever monster you want to summon onto your field from their back row during their turn. And I guess we're going to take a Unicorn, so that works. Flame Burge being sent to the Grave, triggering its effect to reborn the Oak and the Ash. Also triggering the Sunlight Wolf here to add from the Graveyard back to our hand. So again, with the Oak on its initial summon, if we knew they had Ghost Spell and we want to play around it, you just not activate it. Don't activate it, and then wait where in this instance we would have Chainlink won the Oak, Chainlink to the Sunlight Wolf, and they would be stuck with the Ghost Spell not being able to negate the Oak. There's a lot of things you got to think about with Chainlink blocking. We now have Heat Soul draw a card every single turn but not this turn because we're under draw. So during the draw phase, we will be able to get our draw here. He'd sell it up, drawn into an effect veiler. That is great. Much better than impermanence. If you're also playing where art thou, normal summon veiler at a poplar, you got to play right there. Dagger for hire popping itself plus the heat soul. We're that desperate to deal with the heat soul. Ain't no way we're going to negate. Now, What's unfortunate is while we got to pick Unicorn to put into the opponent's back row, it was more so used as a way to stop them from being able to summon Unicorn themselves because our main way to resummon the Flame Burge has been stopped because Unicorn banished our Promethean Princess and we do not play a second copy. So that we go, Link Karibo at the start of the battle phase. You have to toggle on to do this. Otherwise, on the attack declaration, if you summon a Link Karibo, it cannot reduce to zero. It does not work. Dagger for hire, swinging in onto the Heat Soul for 2,300 battle damage taken. Why they want to do that? To make room. They want to make room to summon the Fenbeer. They have to have no monster in the field in order to summon the Fenbeer. So negating the Dagger with the Veiler was a big play. We have Fenrir adding, Rise Heart summoning, banishing off the top of the deck. Our one of Kurikara is now gone, which would have been searchable with our original Sinful Spoils in the graveyard or a normal summoned Ash or special summoned. It's going straight into it. Three material arise heart. I think Snake Eye is going to lose. Every card sent to the grave is now banished. How are we going to play around them? We do have the quick effect to banish any card in the field. We got the Where Arf Thou. Normal Summon Poplar not activating. Arf Thou adding a Birch, which can special summon only while we control the Poplar. So we're going to banish the Poplar before the Birch. No, we're not banishing. We're triggering the effect. But maybe we want to do so on the resolution. The original Sinful Spoils, we didn't activate the effect to add before it's getting banished now. So goodbye to that. The original Sinful Spoils would have to target a Snake Art, Diablo Star in the Graveyard to then return and add. We're going to be banishing the Heat Soul instead of the Poplar. If that was our only disruption. So now simply we're just playing under, well the Big Bang can actually bang the Arise Heart to grab one of our Scare Claws and then summon it back onto the field. Okay. We didn't have a way to add the, the Fenrir into the Banished Pot. Okay, so I think we've messed up our Chain Link orders here, did we? Did we, did we, did we? The Big Bang activated on Chain Link 3. The Arise Heart's mandatory activation to add, so the optional effects activate afterward. So unfortunately, we didn't have a situation where we could equip the Fenrir and then bang the Fenrir back to our hands and then summon onto the field due to the Arise Heart being mandatory. That did screw it up. Birch come forth and summon. Make a Nightmare Phoenix on summon. Discard a card, pop a back row if we want to. Mandatory effect, activating to equip. It already activated to banish a card in the field though, so there's no more disruption. We're simply dealing with all our cards being banished, which is a big enough problem here. A lot of people are playing Zeus, which we could have Zeused instead of making a Phoenix. So if we were to rank one exceed and then battle, we could have Zeused up this field, which we're now regretting. So there is a situation, wait, we we had Zeus, but it got banished. Oh gosh, <laughs> we, had, we had it. Unicorn banished it, damn. Unicorn banished Promethean, Unicorn banished the Axis Code Talker, Unicorn banished the Zeus, that's huge. Unicorn screwed them up badly. Had they been able to summon a Promethean Princess, that would have been a big play. So even though Cash Tira is a lot weaker, it is in a lot of ways directly countering Snake Eyes. Let's go. Snake Eye is going to get Droll and Lockbirded here. We're going to call by the grave, finger the Droll, negate, as the Ghost Spell is going to negate the finger. 
but we already added the sinful spoils, so, but this does stop Ash. Summoning Ash from the deck would not be able to add from the deck a Birch. Birch, which would have been a good special summon here. And with no Ash, what do we do? I guess we have to summon, you know, we could still use Ash to summon Oak from the hand if we only play one Oak. You know, this is an awkward hand. And then the original Sinful Spoils also getting negated by the Ash Blossom. Damn. Ben rear off the top of the deck, Lina to one, ain't no freaking way. We have Valor to fully negate, also the ability to banish the Link Rebo afterward. We also have Theosis, Theosis summoned from the deck, a Unicorn if we want, a Rise Heart probably would be better. Summon Rise Heart, banish, then birth, whatever we banish with the Rise Heart would be the play here. <laughs> Ash negate, the Hand Trap Wars. Another thing that I don't think is highlighted too much about good decks having good one card combos is it allows you to, if you compare, let's say Snake Eyes to a Crystal Beast deck where they don't really have as many one card plays, the Snake Eyes deck is gonna have exponentially way more hand traps in addition to their one card combo. So a good deck is also measured by how many non-engine cards that they could have in the deck and the deck still functions, which also makes them more resilient against max seed. You get max seed and most of your deck's hand traps, okay, I could end my turn. Where a rogue deck's gonna be like, my hand's all gas and you max seed me, I'm screwed. Goodbye to the Link Rebo as we reduce the Fenrir off the top of the deck. Hey, our one card combo. One card off the top of the deck. We're back in the duel. It, this is one card lethal. We should just win the whole duel here. Poplar had the Snake Eye Temple. Temple equipped the Flame Burge. On top of this, we're gonna draw a card here also. Why not draw into a Kurikara? Sure. If you choose to activate your Fenrir, we can now tribute it. Poplar being sent to the grave for our Link Rebo, triggering the Poplar to equip into the back row. Ash will be sending the Poplar plus itself to summon from the hand the Oak, as I said, if we only played one copy. Reborn the Ash in the grave, then send the Flame Burst to summon a Flame Burst from the deck, which will trigger the Flame Burst in the grave to reborn two level one fires, as we perfectly have enough room to do so. As the Field Spell is also boosting up our Snake Eyes is by plus 1100. We're now tributing over the Fenrir for the Divine Incarnate at 4100, that's right. She is boosted by the field spell. She's supposed to be 3000 attack, she's 40 freaking one. Ain't no way, we have 8,000 damage with just this. Game. Let's go, let's go. I don't know anything that's in the top 16. It's gonna be a surprise as much to me as you. Your small world banishing from our hand, what is it? We're banishing a Droll to grab Unicorn. There we go, we got full wombo combo with no disruption to stop it. Can Snake Eye defeat a full power turn one? Cash Tira. So on top of the Arise Heart, forcing every card to be banished when sent to the grave, we also have Imperm Negate a monster on the field. We also have preparations which could reborn a banished Kashtira or one from the hand onto the field. And the Fend Rear after activating a monster effect will banish a card face up, a face up card face down. But Triple Tactics Talent is a huge counter to the Arise Heart off the top of the deck. Ain't no way. What you do is you activate literally anything that would go to the grave that gets banished. It triggers the mandatory effect and then you take control of the Arise Heart. No problem, no more. But, even if we deal with the Arise Heart, all our cards are still getting banished because we're under the lingering effect of Dimension Shifter. Even though we fingered the Shifter, the lingering effect still applies and is not negated. Let's go, mandatory, has to attach. Yoink it. So what do you do here? You, if you don't activate the Arise Heart to banish the Triple Tactics Talent, they're going to then use it against you. Or you could banish your own Arise Heart, but then the Triple Tactics Talent, since it's non-targeting, will take control of the Fenrir. Choices, choices. Detaching three, <laughs> banishing Fenrir. So you're gonna take the Cash Terror Rise Heart, which we could put into attack position. And we're gonna be hoping to be making some big plays here, which we already know the Poplar is gonna be negated. So that's gonna be an issue. And now we have a situation where we have to link off with the Rise Heart or we have to give it back. Did not negate with the Impermanence. We're holding on to it. Linking off into Phoenix. Phoenix on summon, discard a card, it will be banished. So the Poplar is not being triggered here. Goodbye to the birth. We're not gonna have a good follow-up play now. Simply battling right here. Now this looks simple, but it is quite effective as the field spell will reborn the flame burge onto the field if the opponent does anything. They summon, we got it. Which will trigger the field spell right now. Okay, thank you very much. 
Field spell trigger summon flame burst if we want to. We could choose to not do so. We could wait for a better opportunity, maybe, of when we would want to do this. So we passed on the field spell. Was that correct to do? We have the Rise Heart attaching a banished material. Once we get three, that okay, now we're activating it. Come forth. Summon 3,000 attack. But by banishing, that will trigger the Arise Heart to gain a second material. And we're now gonna be using the Banish Theosis to trigger to add back the Banish Birth, which will birth the Fenrir back onto the field. Yes, birth the, the Fenrir is in the great. Where's the Fenrir? Fenrir is somewhere. It's so there it is. No, Unicorn. Where's the Fenrir? Fenrir's attached to the Arise Heart for some reason. Preparations reborning our ogre as the birth reborn the unicorn grabbing the big bang. We have Theosis targeting the unicorn to summon from the deck a Scareclaw Cash Terror that can attack while on defense. That is the third material onto our Rise Heart, now ready to banish anything on the field. And you saw it here. Post nerf Cash Tira defeating Snake Eye through forcing all their cards to be banished. This is the counter. Now is the time to play Cash Tira to counter what I believe to be the new most popular deck. Lethal damage. Very nice. Deck got weaker, but then it got better. All right, let's go. And, and they even had Triple Tactics Talent, which is the best counter to a Rise Heart, and we still prevailed. We have Makanko equipping a Squeak Knight from the deck with a Sublimination Knight to make an Ice Sold. Now, I sold effective adding from the deck is going to be triggering the Droll, which could potentially make adding from the deck with the I sold a potential mistake had we not had the cross out designate to negate the Droll. We have a water equipped onto the Apollo USA here. So what are our disruptions? We have triple monster negate with the Apollo USA. We have rivalry, which could negate a monster in the field. And we have Rondo in the grave, which could non-target take control of the monster. That's about five disruptions. We target the Rondo, but then we don't target the monster we equip it onto. What's good, what's good? Magician Souls, there's a lot of discussion on should people play Magician Souls? Should people play Where Art Thou? Should people, I don't think anyone's really playing Chicken Game, but even Chicken Game could be an option for the replacement of Bonfire. We have Magician Souls being negated on the effect of draw just one as we sent a Diablo Star Black Witch from the deck to the grave, which will now make our Triple Tactics Talent activatable, which, what are we doing here? Uh, equip and equip card. Is this the Angelica ring thing? Is this a new card? Yeah, it's a new one. First time seeing this in a tournament for me. You equip it on, so I said that the rivalry could negate a monster. It also has equip the Angelic ring. Negate the effect of your opponent's first spell card or effect that resolves. Thus, the triple tactics talent is going to be negated. Nuts. Ain't no way. Let's go. We have Ash on Summon getting negated by the Apollo USA again, dropping down to 800 attack. We still have the ability to take control of Monster, which we're doing right now. Target the Rondo, non-target, equip the Ash to take control of it. Link off into Link Rebo with the Magician's Soul, then end our turn, okay? Now the Ohime going back to the hand, thus the Rondo gives the Monster back because you don't control a Makanko Monster. We're going to Gear Freed, banish an equip card to come forth and summon, and then Ohime search from our deck our Ceremony to then discard our Meta Silver Armor. Rivalry is going to be triggered to add the Makanko Fire Dance and the Graveyard back to our hand, which could summon a Makanko from the hand or grave, activating to Reborn our Haw Ray, triggering the effect to search our deck. We also use the additional effect optionally to summon a monster from the opponent's graveyard onto the field that we could attack into for game. We have Hugh Lee equipped with an equip card to double reflect 2,500, or reflect once that is. 25, 25, Ceremony Summon, and then we have another 2,500. Do we not have game? We have game with the Gear Freed. Gear Freed for 500 damage for game. Lethal damage. Damn. Reflect, 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 triple reflect. Damage step, send a card in the field back to the hand with the dance. Very nicely done. Angelic Ring, 
Diablo Star, two cards and, uh, you know, one card plus an engine being added to Makonko, making the deck a little bit better. That's nice to see. Now, Makonko generally wants to go second, but Morisaki plays an interesting version of the deck where they don't mind going first. Ash on Summon is activating. What's I, there, there, There's a lot of things to say here because normally on the ladder, and I've seen this a lot, if I activate Wanted, I'm adding a Diablo Star. Diablo Star does what? She does not activate the summon. She is an inherent special summon just like Fenrir. So what do you usually do? You max C on the resolution of adding the Diablo Star, which they hoped they did because we had a Gamma to negate the, at, the max C, but we respected the Gamma. We waited for there to be a monster on the field, and then we now can't Gamma. So we probably should have taken that opportunity to summon the Diablo Star while we could, but we instead wanted to be a, li a little bit more greedy with the Diablo Star, ensuring that we could use it to send the Poplar from the field as we equip it into the back row. But now we're under max C, so what do we do? Are we really gonna special summon the Poplar? Poplar is not gonna be searching for disruption, unfortunately. It, you know, the Snake Eye Temple, it can kind of be seen as disruption as it will summon the Flame Burst during the opponent's turn. So a lot of people are advising that if you get max seed, this is what you do. You give your opponent draw two and you set up this field. Let's see if that really is that effective. Let's see what it does. Poplar equip into the back row. Diablo Star ending, not summoning and then searching for the trap. So if you get max seed, give your opponent two to have this field. Everyone can make this field off of Ash from a max C. Off of the summon, trigger the Divine Temple to summon Poplar. Not Flame Burge? Okay, and then we're getting Max Seed again. Ain't no freaking way. What the heck? I feel like we are supposed to summon Flame Burge. And then Flame Burge summon Poplar. And then Mascarina link off Poplar and Flame Burge into an Apollo USA. Then trigger the Flame Burge to summon the Poplar and the Ash on the Grave, and then search our deck. But uh, we're all beyond that now. Mascarina linking off of the Poplar to come forth and show on to the Unicorn. Unicorn on summon, discard a card, spin a card in the field, back into the deck, back to back Maxi on our turn and on the other turn where we are special summoning on both. Diablo Star from Morisaki by discarding a card. Come forth and equip into the back row our original Sinful Spoils. We have the Preparation of Rights searching for Ohime, which will further search again. Activating to grab a ceremony, which will improperly special summon the Ohime from the hand. We now have the double-edged sword in the graveyard, which we can equip onto any monster in the field through the effect of the Ohime. And to battle we go. Activate the Ohime, equip the double-edged sword onto the unicorn to reflect the double battle damage lethal 42-42 with the reflect damage combo. Holy moly. Branded 60 cards versus Branded 60 cards. Gia, did you rig this matchup or what? Our grass is dead as we have it turn one against another 60 card deck. Begin. We have Branded Loss, which will make it so our Branded Fusion's activation cannot be negated, but we're negating the effect, not the activation. Ash negates. Gotcha. And you would hope that the grass eats the opponent's Ash, and then you follow up a Branded Fusion, but unfortunately they're both 60 card decks, so we can't do that. Albion sent for the deck our own Branded Fusion to also draw a card here and then ending our turn. Wow, both players uh, kind of bricked up here. We have Nadir Servant locking herself out of the extra deck, but Branded still making great plays without the extra deck. As the Quem will be searched for, sending another Quem from the deck to the grave. Now, if a card leaves either player's extra deck, the Quem will be able to reborn from the grave. Now we have called by during the end phase, fingering the Albion to negate the ability to search or set a branded spell or trap. Very nice, very nice. So you target an Albaz or a monster that mentions it in the graveyard, excluding Quem. So we can't even summon anything with the Quem. Quem, uh, no good. But uh, we also have no plays. What is going on? What the heck? So there was a play here that we would not have. And some people were playing this back in the day. Normal summon tragedy. Uh, Wait, we had a play. We had Tragedy, Attack, and then Main Phase 2, add Brain Infusion. That was our play. What the heck? We uh, we totally screwed that up. All right. We got tra- Hey, we're- now we're doing it! Did you hear me? What? How did this happen? Okay, uh, we're changing it up now. Serenir banishing the opposing Quem to then take out the Quem. We're activating Brain- oh, wait. 
you don't see the branded fusion line. You're actually doing this for branded in red. Okay, never mind. We're doing it. We're you doing it in a different way. Guardian Chimera is here. On summon, it would be able to pop two cards in the field and draw, but uh, there's uh, we 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 had we had one right. How many cards are on the field? It was one on the field, two in the hand. Okay, yep, yep, yep. We have pop one, draw two. That does work. Very nicely done here. Come forth. And you generally want to put the Guardian Chimera on a lower chain link to chain link block and Ash. Ash negating the pop and the draw. You don't want to put it on the top end. All right, we cannot add, but we could set. Set up a fusion duplication, which you normally do when your brand of fusion gets ashed. You then set up the duplication with thrust. Albaz on summon, discard to fuse with the Guardian Chimera going straight into our Mirror Jade. Brain Infusion in the graveyard? Yes. So the tragedy states that you can banish this card from your graveyard, target your branded fusion in the grave, set it to your field. So what you do is you swing in, main phase two, banish, grab back the branded fusion in the grave. That's the play. But well, you know, we have other plans. Negate the grass. Retribution here, I believe, is dead. We don't have any uh, branded uh, fusions in the grave. We are now going to use the branded sword to add back a banished quem to our hand here. Very nicely done under Droll. That is a legal play. We are going to be making Albion Sanctifier. What just happened? Duplication could target your opponent's card? In either grave? Hold up! White! Who knew that? <laughs> Either player's graveyard. We just stole their branded fusion. Wow. Okay. I mean, I knew that. Mirror Jade, non target monster banish, getting rid of that Albion off the field. How long have we had duplication? And I just have never seen that play. Stealing the Albaz also. Stole their branded fusion. Stole their Albaz and then use their Mirror Jade for our own Mirror Jade. That is dirty. Non-target monster banish mostly, not to get rid of the Droll, but to trigger our Albion to search our deck for a Branded Spell or Trap. And we do have Retribution, which could negate the banishment. Albion grabbing the Lost, very well done. We are gonna have to get rid of our Mirror Jade for the negate. Now we have Branded Lost here with the Cartesia. You're not going to be able to activate your Branded Banishment in response to our Fusion Summon. Kit searching for the brightest blazing Branded King, which could negate any card in the field. Interesting. Banishment being activated to Reborn from the Grave, as we said. Retribution is going to negate. Negate by dealing with our own Mirror Jade by returning it back into the extra deck here. As we can now. Fulfill our Cartesia Fusion, triggering the Branded Law, searching for an Albaz monster. We have not used up our normal summon, so we could search for a Quem to normal summon if we want to. That could be a play. Grangernol is going to send from the extra deck or deck to the grave, which is going to be what? Record your not activatable right now. We have the Rinbrum. Rinbrum, and then we have Albion sending a Branded in White from the deck to the grave, which the Retribution could recycle. We're going to use the Brain and White effect to set itself back into the field and during the end phase as the Cartesia also adds itself back. Now, let's read this. I don't... Is it even activatable? Choose a fusion you control that mentions Albaz, which we don't have, then negate a card in the field. It negates all other cards in the field, actually. All other cards in the field get negated besides the Albaz fusion you target. We can't even Mercurier. Can't Mercurier. We can't use the Branded King. What's going on? Quem on summon, sending from the deck to the grave a retribution to uh, recycle the branded fusion that was banished by the opposing fusion duplication. Oh my gosh. That fusion duplication completely screwed him. We're going to use our own retribution to add back our branded fusion, but we have the DD Crow to stop it. People are putting in DD Crow to counter Snake Eye. I'm not sold on it being a good counter to Snake Eye until I see it happen within the tournament, so I'll definitely be keeping my eye out for that. Which is good that it's a super rare. If it becomes popular, it's going to be easy to craft and put in. Special summoning our Cartesia. We have an Albaz in the grave, using the Branded in white, banishing the Albaz and Albion from the grave to make a Borlord Furious, which right now, the opponent cannot chain the Banishment. So what you would want to do is activate the Furious, Pop the Banishment before it's activatable within this window of the Fusion Summon. Which we didn't do. Okay. 
We are now on the resolution going to be reborning Mirror Jade, which we could have stopped. And oh my gosh, and he's fusing with our fields. Holy, like this was completely stoppable. This should not have happened. They have Dragos Topalia for a monster negate, plus the non-target monster banish with the Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade, by banishing the Albaz, the fusion effect is gone. You have to fuse with the Albaz. The banishment does not require you to fuse with the monster you reborn, confuse at anything, but Albaz must be part of the fusion. We have thrusting a talent into our hand as we're going to draw to not take control. Come to me, a fusion deployment. Deployment into Albaz, but we already activated Albaz. So uh, hard once per turn, what are we gonna do? We're gonna Cartesia fuse instead with the Albaz, but the Dragos Topalia is going to negate. This is getting a little awkward here. Our brightest blazing Branded King is just being absolutely useless. Turn after turn, not usable. What is the point of that card? And the Albaz now being summoned during the end phase through the effect of the Titan Clad, fusing with the opposing, opposing Albaz to make our own Borlord Furious Dragon, which within the end phase is going to pop itself, plus the newly set called by, which is not activatable the turn it was set. We have Kit, which could recycle our Branded Fusion back into the grave. So it could add back Branded Fusion. Uh, we'll actually return it back on the deck that is, so it would go back. We have Dragos Topalia negating the Albaz as it's attempting to fuse with us. I do not think so. That was off the Rimbrum play, a very good one. If you have a card in the hand to discard, but the Dragos Topalia pinning down any potential plays. Now Dragos Topalia by negating the Cartesia on the previous turn, further negates it on the next turn if it wants to activate again. Lubellion off the top of the deck. What can we do with this as we add a Druid Swarm? I believe the Mirror Jade is now activatable again. Yes, it is. <laughs> Non-target, monster banish. Goodbye, Druid Swarm. Only activates when sent from the field to the grave. Now to battle we go. Lethal damage. We have to use and abuse Branded Lost. On a chain link one fusion summon with Branded Lost, you have that window of your opponent not being able to respond to its summon. So while they can't respond themselves, you could respond to your own summon. That's when you either want chain link on so that you could respond to your own summon as chain link one, but usually a trigger effect's happening like the branded loss itself. Thus, you don't need your chain to be on your toggle. You could then just chain to your own branded loss while they can't chain their own cards, thus popping things like the branded banishment. And good cards to use in response to your own fusion summon are cards like Bora Load, Mirror Jade, even let's say Dragos Topalia against a uh, Baron to Floor, on the summon of your Dragos Topalia with the branded loss, as long as it was summoned on chain link one, activate Dragos Topalia right then and there, put a counter onto the Baron to Floor and it can't negate. All right, let's hop into game two. Hit on summon, searching our deck for the branded fusion. What I'm really interested in in the dual trial event is are they removing the extra monster zones? Do they have the ability to do that? Is that coded in the game? You would. X them, I don't like that. I don't want X them out. No, don't uh, do, don't shang re up the zones. I want them off the freaking field. I like, wow, what are they gonna do? There is no pendulum zones. Just remove the little scales. Branded fusion negate with the ash. I don't want them to block the zones. I wanna see a clean field with no extra monster zones. Rusting a duplication to the back row, as we said, this is the main use of Thrust. Why you play it, you get ashed on your branded fusion, you just set up their duplication and you're good. But with DD Crow becoming more popular because of Snake Eyes, that does counter plays like duplication, which we don't have right now. Albaz on summon, discard and diffuse with a dark monster to make our light Lubellion on summon, discard a card. Using with our Albaz and Lubellion, we're gonna chain copy branded fusion in response to the activation is summon a mirror jade. So this should be quite interesting what goes on here. What is gonna happen? So we're a bit late on using retribution to negate the Lubellion. We are going to come forth and summon, returning back to the deck, making the mirror jade. The Albion is non-targetable, but we have the mirror jade, which non-target banishes against the non-target. So we have a situation where, where the Mirror Jade can't banish the Albion because it now has to banish the Albaz, which would fuse with the Mirror Jade. Okay. Or we don't have to because we have Sarah near to banish the Albaz. Or we do because the Retribute... Wait a second. Doesn't your Albaz still get banished? 
Goodbye to the Albion. Come forth and summon. Discard branded in red. And then your Albat... Well, you can't discard. You're just going to get banished. And you're banished. Okay. You know, that really didn't work out too well. But it was the best we could do. Okay. So that's fine. 3k to the face. We also have an activatable Titan Clad during the end phase, which could summon a Quem. Setting up a duplication, which could copy a branded fusion from either player's graveyard. Okay. I can't believe a lot of you didn't know that. Come on now. Sending a Cartesia from the deck to the grave, and let's get to it. Now have Ash. And you can't Ash against a duplication, by the way. Duplication copying Branded Fusion. And there was an old ruling where zero attack used to kill zero attack. This would be a suicide. It would be considered inflicted battle damage of zero versus zero. All right. We have Fusion Duplication Reveal and Albion Sun and Albaz. Not able to fuse with the Ash. But we have more than enough for lethal damage here with just 6,300. Quem for game. Thank you to both of you. Let's now hop into another match. ADK, it's Devil. Okay, let me see your message. Do you have some uh, insight under your duel? Hey, it's Devil here. I totally threw this week, but I promise I'll come back next week and I'm going to be better. That is the attitude to have. I appreciate it greatly. Thank you very much. There's nothing on you. You are good enough to get top 16, so you know you're a good player. And I definitely want to see you back next week better than ever. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's hop in another match. Grand opening. Not playing around the Droll and Lockbird. Everyone's playing Droll. You got to play that in the draw phase unless you want them to Droll so that you could use Triple Tactics talent. Otherwise, it's good to use in the main phase. Ash negate the max C. And then we're going to be drawing the Alibur, adding a Branded Fusion, <coughs> which is not too big of a deal here. Okay, so we draw on the resolution here, which was preventable if using the draw phase. But we did want a Triple Tactics Town. We're going to look at the hand. We're not even using draw. We don't even care to use it. We're turning the I Meet You back in the deck, following up a Branded Fusion. Come forth and summon into Albion, which makes us susceptible to a DD Crow or a Bistial. Activating to banish the Alibur and the single Albaz we had in the grave, which is what you would DD Crow, into our Lubellion, discarding our finger to then fuse into our Mirji. Now, with Mirji in the field, we don't want to activate its effect. We want to save it for the opponent's turn. So we're going to send the Albion to the grave for the Lubellion, as Lubellion then sets up a branded spell trap into the back row, which is generally going to be a branded loss, but we're using branded beasts instead, which now has the ability to pop a card in the field. This is not standard branded fusion plays, okay? They, usually this is loss, usually this is banishment. Does this make this bad? No, it's different. So we have the ability to pop a card in the field within the main phase, pop any card, and then we also have the ability to negate the entire current field except the Mirror Jade, which this card's great against Floodgates if you're getting Floodgated for some reason. Let's go. How's this gonna work? We have a Chi Chi on summon searching for our Picari. We're gonna non target Maza. <laughs> okay. Before we even pop, before we even negate, the non target monster banish was enough to scoop. Just by banishing their normal summon, they were screwed. They really needed to link off into the infant, search field spell, field spell, activate to summon from the hand. We would chain pop the field spell and the activation to summon from the hand. We would have then scooped on that. All right, let's go into game two. Picari on summon. We got Super Poly, okay. And uh, Super Poly is generally going to be two of the same attribute on the field to fuse with it. Let's speed this up. We have Dark Infant grabbing the Ignister Island. We have a circular here. What did we accomplish? We have draw a card during the opponent's turn. We have spin up to two monsters on the field and our graves back to the hand. That's one disruption. Double monster negate, that's three disruption. We then have the firewall singularity, which could spin a card on the field back to the hand. So let's go. That's four disruptions plus, you know, the imperm, the hidden disruptions. We'll just look at the public disruptions here. Hates all drawing into another max C. We have fusion deployment, summon from the deck. Albaz. Albaz on summon, discard a card to fuse with the opposing field. We could spin it back to the hand, stopping the fusion summon. Chaining Super Poly to force the fusion. And we have no way to negate the Super Poly. 
we are going to be sending the double monster negate. So we lost firewall effect. We lost our double monster negate. We just have singularity. Singularity unaffected by everything cannot be banished by the mirror jade. Could spin the mirror jade back into the extra deck, which we're triggering the singularity to reborn. We're triggering the firewall to summon a monster from the hand. And we're non-target monster banishing with the mirror jade, which we're going to negate with the impermanence. So I believe we're not using our singularity to deal with it. Maybe we still could. And by spinning it into a private knowledge area, it's not gonna activate to wipe out the field during the end phase. Good cheery onto the field here, very nice. We have the Magna Hut banishing our own Mercoria, which will trigger its effect to search our deck for an Albaz monster as we activate to also search for a dragon during the end phase. We still have Singularity spin. Get ready to spin. When do we want to spin? Uh, the spin is actually not per Colink, it's per Ritual Fusion Synchro or Exceed we have in the grave. So it's going to spin up to two cards back to the hand, and it's including back row. So the regular fire dragon is spin monster. The singularity is spin anything. And let me double check with singularity. I think it could also spin in the graveyard like firewall dragon, potentially. Let's see this. You can target cards your opponent control or in their graveyard. Cards, not monsters. Yep. Car field or grave spin back and per different mon card type from the extra deck that you have in the grave beside Link. Rebellion being discard, searching for Abyss Deal. We have Max C to keep Branded Despia in check. Now, I say that this is not so good against Branded Despia unless you have two. You have to use it on their turn and on your turn as they're going to special summon on both turns. <coughs> sending a Retribution for the deck to the grave with the effect of the Serenir, then sending a Branded Fusion with the Quem to then add the Branded Fusion back to the hand with the Retribution. And now we're whipping out that Max C. Thus, we just go for an Albion Sanctifier and end there. So you're only going to draw one. You're also triggering our Triple Tactics Talent to be activatable. To look at your hand, I believe, would be the play. And do we return your Max C back? Whoa, okay, we got the duplication set up also. And looking at the hand. What do we want to return? The Book of Eclipse. Flipping down the untargetable Albion Sanctifier. We did not want that to happen as we have the Titan clad adding an Albaz from the deck to the hand during the end phase, which could have also instead summoned a Quem if we didn't already have one on the field. Let's see what our plays are gonna be. The Albion could summon a monster from either player's graveyard onto both sides of the field, which could essentially be used like a DD Crow. You could, when they wanna interact with a card in the grave, that's when you fire off the Albion to steal that card, or you summon an Albaz onto your field to then fuse with the opposing field. So that's two ways it could disrupt. And then the duplication could end up summoning a Mirror Jade. We're using it right now. We're gonna use the Albaz to fuse with the Light Picari by disrupting a normal summon of an Ignister deck. That generally is the way to beat them. Now, by baiting them with Albion to fire off their Maxi early, they could chain the duplication to the Maxi, thus they're not drawing for the Rinbrum summon. Rinbrum could negate an extra deck monster effect like Dark Infant attempting to search for the field spell, and then you spin it back to the hand. Albaz activating to fuse with the Serenir, not even the Picari here, as we make a Borlo Dragon, which we are triggering the Serenir to send for the deck to the grave, the Branded King. Okay, we did not Borlo Pop. We're allowing him to Dark Infant, which we did not negate with the Rinbrum. What are we saving our effects for? Okay, we're waiting for the Field Spell to pop the Field Spell. But the field spell replenishes itself, and it's not a hard once per turn, so you really wanted to, I would say, stop them from making a Dark Infant by either popping the monster before it's summoned, or negate the Dark Infant with Rinbrum, but you know, maybe you're saving Rin Rinbrum for something better, I could respect that. The problem is, this if this card's in the graveyard, you banish an Ignister from the grave, then reset it back in the field, then do it again. So this is not good. No good, no bueno. Recycle, reuse again. Popping the Picari would have been a lot more effective. So, same spot. Let's come forth and summon the Achichi, adding a Doyen. I would say Ignister has surprise factor where people are not familiar enough against the deck. So you will be benefiting from that in many ways. We have the Wicked, which will be banishing the Cybers from the Grave to search our deck for a tuner. Doyen is chain link blocking the Wicked from being negated by the Rinbrum, which would have then spun the Wicked back to the extra deck. Very nicely done. Grabbing the Buru, further linking this up in a Transcode Talker. Now, Amazing knows that this is gonna be when the Rinbrum wants to negate. So how do we play around that? It's gonna be interesting to find out. 
Uru sending the Gachiri from the deck to the grave. Idol Reborn, reborning the Gachiri. Looks like we're not going to activate the Transcode Talker as it would be negated by the Rinbrum, making an Access Code Talker, which we can't chain to the Rinbrum. So it's a completely unaffected by all card effects Access Code Talker that's also 5,300, and we can't chain to it. Pop up the whole field, wipe up everything if we have enough attributes in the grave. Goodbye to the Rinbrum, goodbye to the Albion. I guess we ran out of attributes for saying goodbye to the Borload. Now the Rinbrum could reborn an Albaz, but the Albaz already activated this turn. So the Rinbrum could just reborn itself. When are we gonna do that? But we have called by to stop the Rinbrum from reborning itself. Guru reborning the Pakar used for the synchro of the Wind Pegasus. Come forth. And we have the Alan Burt, which could search for our circular. Come forth, circular. Did we give up? Because the Rinbrum was properly summoned, and the Rinbrum could still negate. Uh, it's like, I don't know, maybe we gave up. I think we walked away to make a sandwich or something. We just don't want to do anything. Maybe we toggled off. Heat Soul at draw card, subtraction, subtract off of the bore load. Do I play Roblox? I, uh,. I uh, never. Island come forth and summon from the, I, I don't know what to do with it. Is it isn't that like Minecraft? Maybe I would if there's something good in it, yeah? Dark Infants. At least chain link block this, please. We have Drew a Swarm banishing the Picard from the grave, chain link block in the Dark Infants, so we could only summon two monsters in the grave of the Dark Templar. Come forth. Reborn, reborn. And now we further link this off into Firewall. Doyen being triggered to recycle an idol reborn to be used next turn. And, uh, you know, again, in case I upset someone, I, I have nothing against Roblox. I don't know anything about it. Circular is activating, being returned from the graveyard back to the hand with the effect of our firewall dragon. Sending a Sigma, Sigma reborn if we have nothing in the extra monster zone. I don't understand what Rinbrum is doing. What are you doing? What is Rinbrum doing? You can't summon Albaz, sure, you could, just can't activate it, but... Why are we not summoning itself? We're just waiting. Bro! Did I... Did I miss something here? At least in response to it being spun back in the extra deck, you could activate it. I mean, we are under max C, but still... I, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't know what happened, really. Maybe we're just thinking it's only working with Albaz. Probably, and we're thinking, okay, Albaz already uses effect, so it's essentially Rinbrum is summoned Albaz and the opponent draws one, and we don't want that to happen. Because most people do not actually properly summon Rinbrum so that Rinbrum could summon itself from the grave. That usually never comes up anymore. It used to before the Albion Sanctifier, but to ever summon the Rinbrum properly, that is super rare. So I'm not gonna fault them too much for that, if that's the case that they forgot. Book of Eclipse flipping down the Lubellion plus our own non-Link monsters as the Lubellion would have searched for the Branded Lost that we already have in our hand. All right. Come forth and summon into an Albion. Now, the Singularity is different than the Firewall Dragon. Firewall Dragon is once while face up on the field. The Singularity is once per turn. Now, the Singularity could spin up to two cards on the field or in the graveyard back into the hand but the Branded Loss is making it so we cannot respond to the Fusion Summons. So if we properly do this, we did not properly do this. We wanted to put Albion on Chainlink 1. With Albion on Chainlink 1, we could summon a Mirror Jade with the toggle on. In response to the Mirror Jade Summon, we could banish the Singularity if it's not protected by Gachiri right now, which at this point, I'm going to say I forgot. Is it? Is this unaffected? I don't even know. Uh, maybe Konami should have some indicator of the lingering effect somewhere. I don't know. Is it unaffected? It's not? Okay, well, we could have banished it. All right, because the loss is on chain link one, we could respond to the Mirror Jade summon, which we're gonna respond to it with an Idol Reborn summoning a Dark Infant. Kit is going to be special summoning, adding back a banished grave or from deck branded spell or trap from uh, to our hand again. I've never seen this happen. The other effect of Albion just happened. If this card is in your graveyard, 
you could tribute four monsters, the two in the extra monster zones, and the two in the central main monster zones, and if you do, special summon this card. What the heck? Kit, Mirror Jade, Firewall, Singularity, all sent to the grave for this wild effect that's never used. Okay, that was pretty cool. Red Reboot for the Brighting Blazing Branded King. Albia, okay, wow, what? <laughs> Branded won this. Holy moly. That Albion tribute uh, two monsters from the opponent effect just completely blew them out. Unfreaking believable. <sighs> like, I still don't even understand it. It's two in the extra and two in the central. Two in the central. Okay, so the firewall and the kit were in the central, and the mirror jade and singularity were in the extra. Holy moly. Two central, two extra. Damn. Very well done for both players. Thank you. All right, and it's against pure snake eyes. This is it. Draw phasing the wanted to play around droll is ideal. We're going to then discard our original sinful to special summon our Diablo star, setting up into the back row a wanted to be used next turn. Now using the original sinful to send a face up card to get negated by Ash. Did not Ash the wanted, waited for the original sinful spoils. That was the ideal Ash. Now we're going to draw one card with the Wanted, returning the original back in the deck, which we still have our normal summon, which we could have drawn into an Ash. Snake Eyes, that is, not the other Ash. And that would have been a full Wombo combo that uh, thankfully did not happen for the Rescue Ace player. Another Wanted into Diablo Star. We have Hydrant searching for our Turbulence. So the big issue here is how do we summon our Turbulence? It requires two Rescue Ace cards in the grave, and we only have one on the field to get in the grave. So through the original Sinful Spoils, we could get another Hydrant on the field and then get both of them in the grave to then summon the Turbulence. That's going to be the way. Or uh, we just said goodbye to Turbulence. Get the hell out of here. Come forth and grab from the deck our original Sinful Spoils to then summon a Dark. Dark will summon a Dark Monster from the grave. The opposing Black Witch is ours. We are on summon one, two, three, four. Fifth summon, the Nibiru's coming. Right here, right now, we can Nibiru. We're not going to Nibiru yet. We're going to be reborning. Oh my gosh, that's the other way to get Turbulence on the fields. Very nice. I like it a lot, yes. But Nibiru is gonna stop it. All right, yep. Don't just focus on something from the hand, just reborn it from the grave with the Promethean Princess. Write that down. Grabbing a Black Witch with the Wanted, and we just have DD Crow for our Disruption, which how effective is that gonna really be? Sending Nibiru for the Diablo Star, which could have also sent a card from the hand instead if we wanted. Now, the original Sinful Spoils requires a card on the field to be face up to be sent to then summon our Ash. Ash is going to be adding a Poplar. Poplar is going to be adding a Snake Eye card, probably the field spell, maybe the Subversion. No, we're going to grab the field spell instead. Field spell set up into the back row, our Flame Burge. Ash will be sending the Poplar and itself to summon an Oak. This is where we could DD Crow. DD Crow in response to the Oak reborning the targeted monster in the grave. The Poplar is also being triggered to equip itself into the back row. We're holding on to the DD Crow though. We're not using it, okay? And I know the Oak could summon a banished monster, but you know, we are trying to summon the one that's in the grave. Oak's gonna be sending itself and the Poplar, not the Flame Burge. That's quite interesting. We could have triggered the Flame Burge here, but instead, we're gonna summon a Flame Burst in the deck, making a Relinquish Anima to suck up the token to be zero attack, but there's no more token. Linking this up into a Hita, we're gonna trigger the Flame Burst that way through linking it off the field, summoning two level ones in the graveyard. When do we DD Crow? When do we DD Crow the Promethean? Promethean summon Flame Burst in the graveyard, that's when we do it. But uh, this, okay, so this effect, does it target? No. So we save DD Crow for the non-target Reborn. Thus, we could change our mind and summon something else. Yeah. Okay, uh, so is that the best? Maybe it's still the best use of DD Crow. I'm not so sure on that. I'd have to further analyze something like that. We have over 10,000 damage thanks to the field spell, boosting up those level one snake eyes. It just like that. Game over. That it, Was that necessary? The field spell having the effect to boost up snake eyes. 
huh, did the deck really need that? And then the, the oak does target, and that would be probably be the better one that we would want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go. Wanted Seeker of Spoils are going to be grabbing our Diablo Star within the draw phase, playing around that draw. Thus, as you saw right there, the draw was not activatable. We're now going to be maxing on the resolution of the Hydrant, grabbing the Turbulence, but we are going to finger that C. I do not think so. We are also going to be activating Droll and Lockbird within this window as we chain alert to search our deck before the Droll fully resolves. Now, the Turbulence does not get affected by Droll. It could set four cards in the deck just like the Diablo Star playing right under the Droll. So as long as we can get Turbulence out, we're good. We're going to send Impulse, which is going to be one of the requirements for Turbulence. We need the second Rescue Ace in the Grave, which we already have. We have Alert. We have Impulse. Both could be banished to summon the Turbulence. But uh, maybe we want to try to play around Nibiru. Can we set up a negate for Nibiru? We can't add with Ash, so no Poplar summon and plays like that. We're going to be sending itself plus the Field Spell to summon a Flame Burst in the deck. Linking this off, no Mascarina. We're going to get massively hit by Nibiru. Holy moly, this is not good. We can't be greedy. We have to make Apollo or we lose. We can't just save it for next turn. We got to do it right now. Okay. Uh, you know, it's like I'm cheating. I see the hand. So, like, of course I'm saying that. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of what the situation was. So we, we didn't protect the Turbulence. And by not protecting the Turbulence, we're going to get Nibiru on Turbulence. Zelantis resummoning itself and the Hydrant. Yeah, we had to Apollo. Wait, we couldn't get Hydrant into the grave to banish? What am I missing? Why didn't we banish with Turbulence? We have the Impulse and Alert. I guess uh, we were hoping to fake out Nibiru. So how this works is, and this is a valid play, I end my main phase. I Nibiru. Thus, I retain my main phase and summon Turbulence. That would be a good play. Fake out the Nibiru. You know, it would have been better to summon Apollo, but, you know, we wanted to set this something up like this. It, that, I, I believe that's exactly what that was. We felt Nibiru. It, unlike the TCG, we're going to see the field light up on the fifth summon. So we're, we were just hoping they would use it, but uh, that wasn't the case. DD Crow onto the Promethean, stopping that disruption right there, which would have popped the Hydrant on the special summon of the Diablo Star if we wanted to get rid of that. Yeah. Nibiru was going to keep Anderson in the main phase of Summon Turbulence, but, you know, Zero knew to hold on to it, which was the, you know, a good idea into an even better idea by not using it. Ash into the Poplar, Poplar searching for the Field Spell, and we're just one card Wombo comboing. We do got to be careful about the Zelantis effect that we actually don't have to be careful about because it only works per co-linked monster on the field. So destroy cards in the field up to the number of co-linked monsters in the field. So even if you co-link yourself, that will give Zelantis the ability to pop cards during the battle phase. Now, the Flame Burge could just push the Zelantis into the back row if we want. The Flame Burge is going to be equipping the Ambo Whale from the opponent's graveyard into the back row instead. We are coming forth, linking this off into the Promethean Princess. Promethean Princess, reborn a fire from the graveyard as we're locked in a fire only. Then we're going to make the Ambo Whale. We're no longer locked in a fire only. Link this up into our own. Zelantis banishing the entire field and resummoning it back, which will trigger our Promethean Princess. Zero, I love you for this play. We featured this in my guide, but I know that Zero already knew this play outside of the guide. And you want to make sure your Zelantis is co-linked with your Promethean Princess. And by popping your Hida, you get to trigger the Ambla Whale to pop another card in the field. Oh my gosh, I love it. Pop a card in the field. Yup, this is exactly what we showed on YouTube. And that's lethal damage. Zero, you are amazing. Thank you so much. Lethal! A very cool way to lethal. That's exactly what we showed. That was it. That was it. That was great. Very well done. Thank you, Zero. Thank you, Anderson. We have Sigma being special summoned alongside our subtraction, or I should say addition. 
we are going to be ash negating the Alan Burt from searching for a circular. No circular ad for you. And the Sigma can now be reborn from the graveyard. So we didn't use the Sigma effect in the hand because it would banish it and leaves the field. Now we have Splash Mage. Splash Mage reborn. I believe we just Heat Soul end. Yeah. Heat Soul plus two Imperms and maybe draw into another hand trap. That would be the play. Link decoder making our transcode talker. Are we making a terahertz? I think we terahertz instead of heat soul, which I do believe is better. Reborn the splash mage and then link it all up into the terahertz, which will be a spell and trap card negate plus a negate a face up card. Yep, very well done. Get ready for spell and trap card negating. Max C in the draw phase, unfortunately, did not have the finger to negate with the disave worm. We can't stop the Ash from negating the Max C. So we're ready. When are we negating? Ash will get negated by impermanence, negating both of its effects. Its effect of summoning a Flame Burst from the deck has now also been negated. This is the confliction. This is why a lot of people are playing just two Poplar because it's dead. Now, if the third copy, this being the third copy, if we're even playing three copies, this could have been a Birch instead. We could have made more plays by special summoning it. I, I think I'm a triple Poplar enjoyer, though. We have Link Rebo, didn't even have to force out the activation of the Desave Worm. I think we missed out on Dark Fluid, Neo Tempest Terahertz from sending a card from the deck to the grave, which could have at least during the end phase, maybe send the little uh, square looking thing, that the Dotscaper that reborns in the graveyard. We are going to be activating the Terahertz right here, right now in response to the Effect Veiler, sending a multiplication to multiply the attack of 3,000 attack up to 6,000. We're going to use the subtraction. Wait, why didn't we attack with subtraction first? Uh, oops. Okay, that's fine. And uh, we weren't under one attack only, right? Just, does multiplication lock into one attack? I know circular does. You could attack with more than one monster with multiplication effect. Okay, that's fine. Poplar on summon. Again, back to back. Imper it does, it does. Okay, I misread that. Target. It becomes... Can I not read? I can't read. Level 8. If this card is sent, target. Its attack becomes doubled. Where does it say only one attack? Did you just add that effect after I said it doesn't do it and now I have to reread it? It you, you could do multiple attacks. Subtraction effect locks you into one attack? Oh, you can't attack with subtraction. Thank you. Uh, this says that... It cannot attack this turn. So a subtraction could not have attacked, but the multiplication does not lock you into one attack, but it was the only attack we could have done. So we did not miss playing. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're good. Link Rebo grabbing the, cause you know, subtraction would be too good if you could attack with that free special summon, I, I think, uh, I don't know. Sending the pop art of the graveyard to special summon for the deck. Nothing as the Desave Worm negates the original Sinful Spoil. You're not able to summon an Ash, then add another Poplar, then special summon that Poplar. It ain't happening. We now have the Terahertz sending Dotscaper to be reborn from the grave, but we've got to be careful about Nibiru. We uh, yeah, got summon one, summon two, summon three, summon four. <laughs> Just stop. Stop. I, okay, we're stopping here. We're good. Axis Code Talker, Babusit. Uh, do not summon the Parallel Exceed. Did not do so. Stopping at four summons for a nice and clean 10,000 damage lethal. Taking this into game two. Very well done. Let's go. Got to play around the Imperm. Imperm onto the Poplar. We are not. We're saving that Imperm. We're gonna link off the Poplar. You always wanna do that to get its effect to then equip into the back row to make it more efficient when using cards like the original Sinful Spoils. Sending the Link Rebo instead. We could use the Poplar for the effect of Ash. Now Imperm negating is gonna not only negate the search. Woo! Spicy! That was great! By sending the Link Rebo instead of the Poplar, we could dodge Impermanence. Write that down. Mattapan, very well done. That is great. So by dodging the impermanence, we now get that search and special summon. Very nice. So dodge it and the poplar could be added, then special summoned. It, you know, it's not too, it was cool to see that, but it wasn't that great because we lost our ash. So it was cool, but our field still sucks. 
So that imperm was still effective, because uh, look what it did. It made us end on trash. Anyway, Defensor is a one card cool combo, as we're gonna make a Lingaribo to negate a back row trap, which there isn't one. We did not call by onto the Firewall Defensor though, okay. We're making a Splash Mage. We are triggering the Firewall Dragon to summon itself onto the field. We're still not gonna use that call by, we're saving it. Special summoning our Parallel Exceed. I'm sure we're on summon number 10 by now, ready to Nibiru right now. Tributing off the entire field, giving them a token of the size of, holy moly, 6,200 defense token. We have called by being used onto the Poplar so it does not equip itself into the back row. This will further negate Poplar extending into the next turn. So it could be effective for that. Otherwise, I don't really like fingering the Poplar right there. I don't think it was that effective. We have the Wanted search in our deck for our Diablo Star. We could send from the field or hand to the grave, come forth and summon. Now the Poplar will not be able to equip back in the back row. We're gonna activate anyway. You could use it as a chain link block if they were to have an Ani negate in the field. Let's say they're into floor, block the Diablo Star. It now does not get negated. And now we have our original Sinful. Normal summoning effect Veiler going into the Borload to equip our Link Karibo. We now have our Omni negate, but what is our way to out the token? 6,200 defense we have to deal with, sending the Karibo, losing the attack, but still having the negate. Ash adding a Jet Synchron, but we already used up our normal summon. We couldn't add a Poplar because the Poplar is negated, so maybe that finger was pretty good. Ash is gonna send itself, plus the Nibiru to come forth and summon Flame Burge Dragon. Flame Burge Dragon pushed the token into our own back row since it's my token, as we then attack for 6K damage. On top of that, having that Omni negate that we have to play through, what do we negate? Sending the Micro Coder to the Graveyard, getting Ashed, and then we have Borload for the final card, thus resulting in a Swift Surrender, taking this into game number three. Begin. Huh? The, yeah, the Defensor is the combo, the Guardian isn't, but... The defense, there, which we had, right? Well, the Guardian is a Garnet, and this is why some people don't like this, because then you gotta put more Garnets in your deck, which we only have one, so we really got screwed. This is why the Snake Eye cards, they don't say summon from the deck. They say summon from the deck or hand. So if you open up Oak, you open up the Flame Burst Dragon, who cares? You do minus one, but you're summoning from the hand, where this combo does not have that luxury as the Snake Eyes do. We have Poplar being sent to the graveyard, activating to equip itself into the back row. Veiler negating the Diablo Star Black Witch, eating up a negate. We're still gonna call it by negate, hopefully forcing out the impermanence mate to then follow up, use Ash. Ash could add Poplar or Birch. Poplar will still activate in the hand and come forth and summon since we didn't use that effect of Poplar yet. Very well done. Just eat up negates and then make your real play afterward. That's how you always wanna generally play. You wanna have multiple options. So a lot of you learning the Snake Eyes deck probably would have fired off the Snake Eye Ash, but I think generally it is better to use your non-normal summon to eat up negates and then go through with your normal summon main play as we're doing right now. Ash sending the Link Karibo, come forth and summon. a Going right into Flame Burge, not Oak. Where's the Oak? We're gonna summon the Oak right now. No, we're not. We're going right into the Jet Synchron. As we said, it could summon from the hand or deck, so it's not a Garnet, that's good. Into now making Borload Savage Dragon, equipping the Link Karibo. Why we skip Oak? Where are the Oak at, mate? Come forth and summon the Jet Synchron from the grave as we link off into a Sunlight Wolf, triggering the Flame Burst to reborn two level one fires from the grave. As we're going to now trigger the Wolf to add back a Poplar, we already used up our normal summon. Shokan into the Nightmare Unicorn, spinning back the set card. Not spinning back the set cards, we're going to instead make an Axis Code Talker for game. So not BMing the opponent, just I know I have lethal without summoning Oak. I'm just gonna go right into it. I see the line, I got the play. So that was nice of Matty Pin, cutting the combo short to just win the game. Good job, Matty Pin, making it to the top eight. And I saw Matty Pin in the chat say this is their first tournament. So congratulations. Thank you, Matty Pin. You're doing well. Starting off with our Poplar, searching for our Divine Temple, which we would search for the original Sinful Spoils if we didn't already have it in the hand. 
we are wanted, searching for our Diablo star, making our Link Karibo to equip into the back row. We're trying to feel out some disruptions here, not even using Max C yet. We're waiting for an effective special summon. Now, the choice is, do we Ash, do we Max C? We're gonna Max C instead, but then we lose out to an Ash. So we gotta be careful about that when holding on to our Ash and then relying on Maxi being used in response to an activation to special summon. Negate. As we now summon for the deck in Ash, Ash could then add a Birch or a Poplar. That's gonna be Poplar. I don't like Birch so much. I think I'd rather play more Poplar or just play two Poplar, no Birch. We have the Wanted returning back the original Sinful draw into our Cross Out Designate. We wait with the Ash and now we get punished by Cross Out. Ain't no way, because we're waiting for the effect of probably summoning a Flame Burst from the deck. And that's just how it be. Yep. <laughs> Damn. And now GOT Benny is going to see that they're probably thinking, oh, they had Cross Out anyway. No, they drew into it. So you actually got punished, got punished by holding onto the Ash instead of firing it off earlier. Negate. That's just how it be. So was it correct to hold? You could still argue that it was correct to hold because what are the chances of drawing into a called by called by or cross out? It is three cards to be fair. We are now setting up an original sinful, which we have already used this turn, so we can't use it again, making the IP mask arena. We are then going to flame burst, put an oak into our back row, then end our turn just like that. The flame burst will be able to quick effect summon the oak. We're gonna be chaining Max C here, so do we even activate the Oak? Can't chain Mascarina to the Max C because we're not in the main phase, so, whoa, we're still committing to, no, we're adding, we're adding, thank you, there you go. Add, do not special summon, you do not have to special. Poplar now making the Mascarina protected from the impermanence, so that's another thing. We kind of played into imperm, but the Flame Burge was not summoning a Mascarina. If it were a Mascarina, imperm on a Flame Burge would have been the play. And because that would be the play, you would then not use Flame Burge early, waiting for them to commit to the field before summoning the Mascarina. Hopefully that all makes sense. And we may not even Mascarina at all because of the Max C that we're now under. Poplar equipping into the back row. So, you know, Maxi just became even more important. You want to Maxi on both players' turns against Snake Eye, similar to Brandon Despia. Triggering the field spell, which that just gave a Maxi draw, so was that worth it? We had the Wanted Seeker, Sinful Spoil, grabbing a Diablo Star from the deck here. And the Kurikara is activatable on all three monsters here. That's going to be 3,045, 6,000 attack Divine Incarnate so far and it would make it to the Mascarina can't activate, but then the Flame Burge would summon two monsters in the grave, which would they because they're under max C. This is crazy. This is a wild duel of what could happen here. We are Mascarina-ing into a goddess. Now our Kurikara Divine Incarnate is gonna be a bit smaller, but the goddess is a mandatory activation playing into the Kurikara, thus we could still tribute both of their monsters to be 4,500 instead. All right, it, wait, wait, is it a mandatory? Did I uh, correctly say that? Let me double check that. Link some, if this card is linked, okay, it's not, it's not incorrect. It was optional, we did not use it. So correction, it does not play in a curry card. I thought it was mandatory. We have the Diablo Star activating to equip a card into the back row. So the curry card will just tribute the Flame Burge, which would trigger to summon two from the grave. We are now summoning from the graveyard our chain link blocked. The Flame Burge gets negated by Goddess, but by putting it on a lower chain link above another trigger, under another trigger effect, it cannot be negated by the Goddess. So that's an important play there. Hito could be negated by the Goddess, which we're doing, which now we're played into the Curry Kara. Now the Curry Kara could double tribute. We're gonna further link this off into a Promethean Princess, Loch Ness and a Fire Monster, only reborning from the grave, nothing because we're gonna negate with the Ghost Bell as the called by is going to finger the bell. Bell could also negate the called by, so being negated by one is quite interesting. Negate. Very well done. Where are we going here? Are we gonna make a Zelantis play potentially? Well, our Flame Burge is successfully being reborn as the Ghost Bell could not stop us. Pushing the Flame Burge in the back row and then summoning a Curry Kara, a smaller one, because we pushed the Flame Burge into the back row but it does not matter because we have more than enough for lethal damage here. 
Now, by pushing in the back row, it makes it so it does not activate its effect on the grave, so that was the better play here. Instead of summoning a bigger Kurikara, because, you know, even though they're under max C, they would have activated, so that was correct. Push the graveyard activator into the back row. A very nice back and forth, very well done. Let's take this into game two. All righty. Sinful spoil in the standby phase. We could not toggle on quick enough here, but thankfully the opponent did not have draw. Now, I, I do want to, I know it's not like a big deal to pause for this because, but I do want to let you know in the dual settings, which I can't show you at the replays, you could make it so your toggle is on at the start of the duel and you don't have to be quick. It will, if you start a duel, go to the bathroom, come back, it will ask you in the draw phase if you want to be using your wanted, which I think now's the time to turn on that setting, especially if you're playing in tournaments. Black Witch, setting up into the back row, the original Sinful, send the Diablo Star. This could be a good Ash, which is a good finger. We're going to negate. <coughs> Use my video for the correct settings. Well, very well done. Then you got it set up. <clears throat> Negate and banish the Ash. And now we have full combo, but the Imperm will stop the Ash from adding the Poplar. And the Imperm is so effective that it stops both effects. The effect of summoning a Snake Eye Oak from the deck is also being thwarted here. Very nicely done, because we could have then normal summon the Veiler or Maxi, then send it and then make a, another play. We did not draw into anything too helpful here. We're just going to end on a Link Kariba plus three hand traps. This is what I said about good decks having room for a ton of hand traps. If you're a one card combo deck and you get max C or interrupted, you're then going to have a lot of disruption in your hand very likely from probably half of your deck being interruptive cards. Max C in the draw phase here as we're going to be setting up with the Snake Eye Field Spell, putting a Flame Burst into the back row. Normal summoning a Baboosed Up Jet Synchron thanks to the Field Spell as the Link Rebo reduces the Jet Synchron down to zero attack. What the heck is going on here? If we Normal or Special, that triggers the Field Spell to summon the Flame Burst, so we're gonna set the Ash back to you. We're going to then link this up, link Karibo, getting the Jet Synchron in the grave, normal summoning the Oak to then reborn the Jet Synchron or a Banished Ash if we had one. Oak is going to be negated here, also negating the effect of summoning a Flame Burst from the deck, which we had to play. Oak send Flame Burst, trigger Flame Burst, summon a body from the deck, summon Ash, Ash search Poplar. That Veiler was a big deal, which <laughs> we're stealing the opponent's Ash with the effect of Hita but we had two hand traps to further stop this. Now, Veiler is better than Ash because now the Ash is not fully negated like the Veiler did so to the Oak. And now we're gonna have that big play I was talking about, sending the Flame Burge to Wham Bam, thank you, Mamum. Poplar Search, Flame Burge Reborn 2, and that's what Snake Eye do. Damn. And that is the conclusion of the top 16 as we now advance into the top eight grand finale in another video, unless you're watching live on twitch.tv slash Thank you very much for watching this long. Let's go.